Do you know what this spider is doing? It decided to build a refuge from the heat and cold. But it can't just climb into a shell that lies on the sand. This is simply unsafe. So the spider lifts the shell higher, attaching it to the plant. It's worth saying that this is the first such case that was captured on video. Actually, that might be the first ever case in nature, when the genius of a spider allowed it to do something like that. However, aside from hiding in shells, they are capable of doing a lot. Today, you'll find out why spiders take a fake decoy of themselves, what price some spider males have to pay to get super strength, and how spiders use everyone around, from ants to deer, for their purposes. And yes, there's gonna be a lot of spiders in this video, so get ready! Why spiders? Why couldn't it be follow the butterflies? You may be wondering why I'm showing you the hole in the bug net. But look closely. It's completely covered with cobwebs. And here, the patch is even bigger, as if the spider decided to help people. Okay, that was probably not what happened. Spiders hardly think about people's feelings towards insects when they're in their homes. But on the other hand, they seem to know very well that bug nets are set up to avoid having these very bugs inside. Once there's a hole in the net, insects will fly there. And isn't this a great place to scavenge for food? I don't know how the spider could possibly come up with this idea, but it's simply brilliant. Also, this patch is actually quite durable. Yes, it looks very flimsy, but some spiders spin webs that can hold the weight of a bird. These are Joro spiders, and there's been at least one documented case when a female cardinal sat on a web, pecked at a spider's prey, and then calmly flew away. The web remained intact. And although birds sometimes pick food from the spider web, they usually do this by hovering in the air or sitting on a nearby branch. So this case is really unique. I don't think the spider was happy when its prey was stolen. But let's leave the bird's tricks for another video and talk about a spider that hoisted a stone with the web? What? Steve, wh why did the spider do it? There is a logical explanation. The garden spider wanted to weave a web under the roof of the garage, but couldn't anchor it on the corner of the roof. So the spider found a solution. It entwined a stone in the web to suspend it and thus anchor the lower corner of the web. That's it, the web's ready. The spider's amazing. Look around carefully when you enter the garage. You might hit your head on a suspended stone. Because this is not an isolated case, judging by the information we've been able to find, spiders periodically use stones when weaving webs. They just apply the basic laws of physics so that the web works perfectly. Spiders and physics. There's something scary about this. What's next, are they gonna invent catapults or something? But if you got a little worried too, I have a simpler explanation for what happened. Perhaps the spider was not going to suspend the stone on purpose. It actually wanted to attach the end of the web to the ground. Stone equals earth. But the spider didn't expect that the stone it picked up would be too light and would rise when it pulled the threads. But since it worked anyway, the spider decided to just leave it at that. You may choose the explanation you like most. Maybe it's more reassuring to think that spiders aren't that smart. However, suspending stones and using holes in bug nets to catch prey are definitely not the only manifestations of their intelligence. How do you like a spider that makes decoys of itself to confuse predators? It doesn't play dead, it doesn't mimic a twig, but actually and purposefully creates a fake copy of itself. Scientists learned about this by accident. They explored the forest in the Peruvian Amazon and noticed a dead spider caught in the web. It looked like a fungus-covered corpse of an arthropod, but the alleged corpse then began to twitch. And then the researchers noticed a second, smaller spider about an inch above the decoy. The living spider pulled the web, and the fake one moved. Scientists now believe that the spider, thought to be a member of the Cyclosa genus, may be creating these decoys as part of a defense mechanism to confuse or distract predators. Not all spiders thought of this, but I want to look at other defense mechanisms. The spider Aratia mullion, for example, has learned to create an invisibility cloak. This species belongs to the jumping spiders, and you somehow don't expect such skills from them. However, these spiders, which lead a sedentary life on the surface of tree trunks, make perfectly camouflaged retreats. They only choose the holes in the open surface of the tree trunk. 
Essentially, the spiders gnaw off a piece of bark and then attach it to their web nest to blend in with the tree. It looks like a pocket. Thanks to this trick, these spiders are very difficult to observe. After all, you first need to find them, and you'll never notice a hidden spider even just a couple of feet away. But that's nothing compared to spiders that willingly get castrated to become super warriors. Sounds like some weird practice from some very ancient wild tribe. But it's happening right now to spiders. Let me explain how it works. In many spider species, males reproduce using two appendages known as pedipalps. In the process, one or both of the appendages may be lost. And this is quite a normal order of things. Scientists suggest that, in this way, the males restrict access to the female so that no one else can mate with her. Yes, this behavior may seem like a bad idea from an evolutionary standpoint as it renders the male infertile. However, the story doesn't end there. Studies have shown that males with missing appendages are much more aggressive and active in guarding females. During fights between males, spiders that lost both pedipalps proved to be the best warriors. They were more than three times more likely to attack, chase, and defeat any rival. Perhaps this is due to a change in hormone levels, or maybe males without appendages simply have no reproductive future, so they have nothing to lose. But let's talk about something not as sad. For example, here's a fact for you. Sometimes spiders build their webs between deer antlers. In one of the previous videos, I've already mentioned this. And now we've found evidence that creating such webs is a common practice. Scientists have established that when a spider weaves a web on the antlers, this increases the likelihood of prey being caught up in the web when the deer accidentally moves. I mean, a deer can move with some purpose, but it doesn't suspect that at the same time it's catching insects with a web that acts like a net. This relationship is neither good nor bad for the deer. While some spiders catch prey with the help of deer, others have learned to mimic ants to avoid getting eaten. Why ants in particular? Turns out this is a good strategy. Hunting an ant is rather difficult, and most predators prefer to eat something else. First, many ants produce formic acid, which is why they taste terrible. Second, they're very aggressive and aren't that nutritious. So when you have to choose between a spider and an ant, a predator is more likely to choose a spider. No. Yes? Spiders of the Myrmarachni formicaria species are well aware of this. To look more like ants, they lift their front legs to mimic ants' antenna and walk in a special way to make it look like they have six legs instead of eight. Some spiders go even further and disguise themselves as ants so successfully that they even fool the ants themselves. They use chemical mimicry, making the ants think they're part of the colony. This way, spiders penetrate into ant nests and hunt there, eating ant larvae. Safety is a bonus to having a lunch buffet. As I said, many predators prefer to stay away from ants. However, even this is not as surprising when you learn of spiders that disguise themselves as bird poo. I mean, the strategy is brilliant. Nobody wants to eat bird droppings. It's just, how did they come up with that? I'm talking about juvenile orb weaver spiders. This is actually a rather interesting family with unusual webs, but scientists were still surprised when they found something like a decoration on the web. The silvery spider hanging down the middle, its brown spotted legs sticking out the sides, and the white disc of cobwebs, all this together looks exactly like droppings, and even matches the average size. The researchers also measured the reflectance of fake and real bird droppings in natural conditions. They found that they were indistinguishable for the predators like wasps. That is, it really works. And what about the spiders who figured out they don't have to catch prey themselves, but simply steal it from their larger brothers? This is what Argorode spiders do. Actually, they can weave their own webs and act civilized, but instead, small spiders choose deception. They find a web of a large spider and remain there, waiting for prey to come into view. After that, these thieving spiders wait until the host of the web catches and immobilizes the prey, and then they find it and carry it away to eat later. And although a large spider can easily eat a small one, the poor eyesight of both makes it hard to do so. That's why argorodes can snatch prey literally from under the noses of their bigger neighbors. And sometimes they act entirely out of line and attack the host spiders, 
choosing the moments when they're most vulnerable. For example, during molting. But my favorite example of spider genius is, of course, the golden wheel spider. This is a huntsman spider native to the Namib Desert in South Africa. Despite its rather intimidating appearance up close, this spider doesn't exceed 0.8 inches in length and constantly has to escape from its main enemies, spider wasps. This is a family of large, strong, solitary wasps that can smell the golden wheel spider in its burrow at a depth of 16 to 20 inches below the surface. After discovering prey, this wasp can move up to 2.6 gallons of sand to get to it. The wasp then paralyzes the spider with its venomous sting, drags it into the hole, and lays an egg in its body. And when the larva hatches from the egg, it'll eat the spider from the inside. In short, the golden wheel spider really doesn't look forward to this encounter. Naturally, it'll go to great lengths to avoid becoming a living incubator, so it came up with one of the most incredible ways to escape nature is ever known. Taking advantage of the steep, slippery surfaces of the dunes where it lives, the spider coils its legs around its body, forming a ball, and cartwheels down the slope to safety. It develops a speed of about 3 feet per second and makes several dozens of turns per second. Honestly, I don't know how the wasps react to this, but I'd simply be shocked. Wait, what's that? The spider that caught a firefly to lure more flies with its light? Does this really work? <clears throat> okay, we figured it out. Actually, the light emitted by fireflies is too weak to attract other insects. Its only purpose is to lure other fireflies to mate. You might think a spider's going to use one firefly to have more of them for dinner, but this is also unlikely. The blood of fireflies contains the steroid called lucibophagin, which makes the insect simply as unappetizing as possible. Once predators get a bite, they realize that fireflies aren't the best choice for lunch. So what's the meaning of this strange behavior then? Looks like the spider is using the firefly as protection. Turns out that a faint glow repels bats precisely because fireflies are tasteless. Bats associate the unpleasant taste with firefly light and prefer to look for other prey. This gives the spider some degree of protection because many bats don't mind having spiders for a snack. See you later.